this video, we go hands on with well over 50 new changes and features found in iOS 14 beta 2. What new features can you expect in this latest beta? We break down it all in this video. But first, special thanks to our sponsor. Mac Stadium is the leading provider of cloud solutions for workloads that require macOS. With private clouds built on genuine Apple hardware, they're trusted by iOS developers and engineers around the world. Their latest innovation is Orca, a virtualization platform that, get this, is designed for Apple hardware but based on standard cloud orchestration tools like Docker and Kubernetes. Spin up an Orca demo today for a two-hour test drive. It's perfect for devs who need access to a large pool of Mac Pros or the latest Mac Minis to run CI-driven development pipelines. Get 50% off the first six months of a Mac Mini subscription with code WWDC2020. Special thanks to Mac Stadium for sponsoring 9to5Mac. So in iOS 14 beta 2, now when you double tap on the picture in picture window, you can switch between three different sizes. So you have small, medium, and large. Whereas in the first beta, you were only able to switch between large and small, but now they have the medium in there, which is great. And of course, small, back up to medium, and back up to large. And when trying to update to iOS 14 beta 2, you'll notice a new little message here in the update settings that tells you that updates cannot be installed while audio is playing. So in previous versions of iOS, night mode, once you invoked it, kept going until completion. So if I tap the shutter button here, you can see there's no way to stop it by tapping shutter again. But notice what happens when I do the same thing on beta 2. Notice the shutter button turns into a stop button and I can interrupt the night mode capture at any time. So this could be for creative purposes. Maybe I only want two seconds of night mode capture instead of three. Well, I can interrupt just like that. In iOS 14 beta 2, you'll find a new files widget. So if you just tap that widget in the widget explorer, you'll see a medium and large recent widget for the files app. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the medium widget to the home screen and it doesn't populate just yet. Let me just swipe over and swipe back and that should populate that files app here with the recently used files. So there we go. So we have some stuff from pages, from, from numbers as well. I can tap any of those and open those files up directly. So let's go ahead and tap on this pages document. And as you can see, it opens up right there in pages. So what do you guys think? Do you think that's a handy widget to have on your home screen or not? Let me know down below in the comments section. And also tell me what other widgets you would like to see. Now here's a really cool feature in beta 2. The add widget button actually matches the accent color of the widget slash application related to it. So you can see purple for podcast. You see yellow for the tips app. Let's find something else here. You're going to see pink for news and let's find another. How about batteries? It's going to be green. Small detail, but nice nonetheless. So now when you add the two by two reminders widget, it's gonna actually display the first reminder. And there's also quite a few other changes as well. For instance, the glyph icon related to the list, the location and the size is a little bit different on beta two. You also find that the number of reminders listed, which in this case is just one, the location of that has changed as well, along with the font size. So a lot of subtle changes here with reminders, nothing outstanding, but it's definitely handy to have that first reminder listed on your two by two widget. Now on the Siri Suggestions app suggestions widget, you're going to notice that you now have badge notifications on the applications that it suggests. For instance, here with mail, and before anyone says it, yes, I know I have a problem with not cleaning up my email inbox. It's just atrocious, but that's not the point. The point is you get now badge notifications on Siri suggestions. You also get a larger size photo widget available. You previously had the small, the medium, and now though you have a large photo widget that you can add to your home screen or to your widget center. And that's pretty nice to have, especially if you have some really nice photos in your library. Now the notes widget gets several updates as well. You'll notice here on the right side, you have beta two running. You see not only more text from that single note, 
And you'll also notice that the location of the timestamp here on beta one is different compared to beta two. You also notice that the header, the little yellow portion is a little bit larger on the original beta. And in the notes folder widget, it'll also show you the first note in there. So instead of just telling you how many items, it'll actually list text from that first note. And you also notice the header is a little bit different. It actually says notes at the top. And you're gonna see similar aesthetic changes for the larger notes widgets, the medium and the large widget. You'll see uh, some changes with just the overall look of these widgets compared to beta one on the left side. Admittedly, these are subtle changes, but they are changes nonetheless. Here's something you'll notice in the battery widget. You'll now see when a, an item is fully charged, you'll see how the circle overlaps, sort of like in the fitness app, compared to how it makes a full circle in the previous beta. And some much needed changes when removing an app from the home screen and adding it to your library. So when you go to remove an app, now it says remove app from home screen, instead of just saying, add to library like you see here, which is true, but it's just sort of confusing. Remove from home screen is just so much more clear. So I'm gonna remove from home screen and what this is going to do is remove it from the home screen, but keep it in the app library. And now in beta two, you can delete individual apps from the app library, even if they don't exist on the home screen. In the previous beta, you could only get delete app when long pressing if the app existed on the home screen along with in the app library. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and place Dark Sky back on the home screen so we can compare the text between the two betas when you try to remove an app. So on the left, beta one, you can see where it says remove app and on beta two, it says delete app. Same exact function, but a little more clear in beta two as to what will exactly occur when selecting that option. So we're going to choose that one. You can see both will delete. Now, when you have an offloaded application in beta two, it's actually going to show that it's offloaded here in the app list, which is displayed when tapping the search button or when swiping down when viewing the app library. So a little more clear as to what will happen when tapping the app in beta two. And in beta two, when compared to beta one, you're gonna see rearranged app library categories. So for instance, you see social, productivity, utilities, creativity. So you see when compared to beta one, the placement is a little bit different. And in the HomePod settings, you're gonna see a new add automation button. And this will allow you to quickly integrate your HomePod with various HomeKit automation. So there's some very subtle changes in the album layout, but if you look closely, you'll see them. For instance, the genre is now in capital letters. The track list is closer to play and shuffle and more. Now this is gonna be something you're just gonna to have to take my word for, and that is haptic feedback is now present on the transport controls, you know, like play, skip, back, pause. Those buttons now have very subtle haptic feedback when touching them. And in lyrics view, you're also gonna feel some subtle haptic feedback when scrubbing through the song and as you peruse through all those lyrics. Now, keeping with the theme of subtlety, you'll notice in the music app, the menu bar, the icons are slightly, just slightly adjusted so if you look closely, you'll notice, for instance, the library icon is a little bit closer to the top near the now playing shortcut in beta two. And you'll also find updated play slash love glyphs. You'll see they're dark in beta one and they're more of an outline in beta two matching the rest of the glyphs. Now, if you go into settings, sound and haptics, you'll notice that reduced loud sounds has been promoted more closer to the top right beneath the vibrate switches. And you'll notice that the one by one home toggle returns. If you go to control center settings, you see that home toggle, you can just add that back to your control center. And then we'll just open up control center and there we go. There's our home toggle to open up all of our home settings. And in beta two, you'll notice updates for Siri and search settings for individual applications. So if we go down to settings, Siri and search, and then go to an application, we'll just choose one password in this case, You'll see where it says own home screen for the heading and compared to beta one, you'll see some updates to the switches that appear. And these options are all based on a hierarchy. So if you turn off the top most, then the ones below will be disabled. So now you have more granular settings in beta two. You have the show app in search toggle, which can be switched on or off independently of some of the other options inside the Siri and search settings. So if we go ahead and toggle one of these off, you'll see, like I said, the hierarchy. So it will disable the toggle directly beneath. Now in reminder settings for beta two, you have an already exposed time picker. Whereas on beta one, you had to tap the time first before exposing that picker. 
Now in the phone preferences, you'll find two new glyphs for incoming calls and announce calls. In the previous beta, these two sections were just text. There was no glyph there to be found. And the same thing goes for settings FaceTime. So if you go there, you're gonna see the two new glyphs there for incoming calls and announce calls. Like phone settings, these previously just contained text. And under the directions preferences for cycling under the map settings, you're gonna find that stairs has been removed as an option to avoid. In the previous beta, you had the option for stairs, and I imagine that this will be coming back in future betas. And in beta 2, you have the ability to disable the animated cover art that you find inside the music app. You can see the animation there. And when we venture over to the music settings, you'll find a new motion section. So you just open that up and then you can enable motion, enable it on Wi-Fi only or disable it altogether. And of course, when you, your battery is low or if you have a poor network connection, motion will be automatically disabled. So we've turned it off and now you see the formerly animated cover art is no longer in motion. And in beta 2, you'll find a new family sharing glyph under iCloud settings. And as a part of the new private address feature that spoofs your Mac address in iOS 14, you'll find a new privacy warning message at the top of your individual Wi-Fi network if private Wi-Fi is disabled for that particular network. And this is really cool. You get a brand new calendar app icon for beta 2. You can see a bolder font for the number. And you also get an abbreviated day, which allows it to be a little bit bigger then spelling out the full day, which is really hard to see in some cases. I like it a lot. What do you guys think about that new icon? And you'll also notice a change with the clock app icon in beta 2. The hands, as you can see, are bolder than they were on the original beta. And at the bottom of the weather app, you'll actually notice where it mentions a street level location for your weather reading. So I can actually tap that and it'll take me out to the maps app and show me that exact location in iOS maps. When adding a new list in reminders, you'll notice a subtle change to the emoji glyph. You can see it right here. See that little glyph for the emoji icons. Now notice how that compares with the beta one version. You can see it's gray versus blue on beta two. And that indicates what's possible in beta two when adding an emoji icon to your list. Now you can actually change the background color, whereas before you couldn't change the color at all. Uh, when you tried, nothing would happen, but now here you can tap any color and add that to the background of your emoji. And when going to the privacy support in Safari, you'll notice that the trackers tab is now active, whereas it wasn't before in beta one. So now you can break it down by websites and see what trackers apply to that website, or you can break it down by trackers and see what trackers are present on the websites that you visit. So now two convenient ways to view tracker information in the privacy report in Safari. And now when you long press the bookmarks button at the bottom of your Safari window, you'll notice that the order of the options have changed. So the ability to add bookmarks for all open tabs is displayed first. And in control center, you'll notice that the sleep mode toggle has been changed from a purple icon, which matches the do not disturb theme to a teal icon, which matches the sleep mode theme. So that's a, a nice change to have. And you'll notice that the font for HomeKit items in Control Center is a little bit thinner here in Beta 2 when compared to Beta 1. Not a huge change, but if you look closely, you'll see the difference between the font weight. And in Beta 2, the Translate app shows the country of the language that you're using. So for instance, here you have UK or US English, you have mainland China, Chinese, and this will be reflected on the language buttons on the main part of the app. And you'll see an updated save video dialog when saving a trimmed video. So you can see the difference between the two with beta two, of course, on the right. And assuming you have an Apple Watch in the new watchOS beta, you can actually go in and enable the hand washing timer, which is a brand new feature in watchOS 7. If you want a watchOS 7 overview, let me know down below in the comment section. And then also go ahead and click the like button down below to let me know. But to be all the way real, I'm going to do it anyway. And also in the health app, you're gonna find new hand washing details. So you get this detailed overview of why hand washing is so important to protect your health. And you may be surprised, well, you're probably not surprised. I mean, it's pretty obvious why it's important, but nonetheless, it's a nice little overview for you. And you'll notice some small layout changes in the fitness app. For instance, on beta one, you had the full date with the year. On beta two, there's no year there. You also notice some differences with the headings, uh, bolder font weight there on beta two versus beta one. And a small change with the podcast app. Now the browse and library tabs have been swapped around, so. On beta two, the browse tab appears first, followed by the library tab. 
and in beta 2 you'll notice a less prominent blur effect with full screen Siri enabled in accessibility settings. So if we go to accessibility, go down to Siri, and we disable the show behind apps option, that's gonna make Siri basically take up the full screen or occupy the full screen and blur out the background. Well, when compared with beta one, you're gonna notice that this blur effect is a little less prominent in beta two, which I kinda of like, to be honest. And you'll get an updated clipboard access notification when copying from your Mac on beta two. And nine to five Mac has found evidence of QR code payments for Apple Pay coming in iOS 14. And iOS 14 will include an option to change default services for each HomePod user for music, podcast, and audiobooks. Spotify on HomePod, anyone? So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at the top iOS 14 beta 2 changes and features. Be sure to subscribe down below for more videos and also leave a thumbs up. Just click that button below because that actually legitimizes this video for others and they see that it's, you know, it's worth watching. And also I've had a lot of people ask me what the iPhone stand that I'm using is. And it's this right here. This is from Whip Labs. I can't remember the exact name of it, uh, but I'll have it linked down below in the description. It, this is an excellent stand, by far my favorite I, iPhone stand uh, because it uses this little sticky surface, which is both on the bottom and on the front that allows the iPhone to stick to it. And you can remove it and stick it to it again and just clean it off and it re retains its tackiness. So it sticks on there really nice, doesn't move around at all. So again, it's from Whip Labs. Check down below in the description for the details on that. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a hands-on look at well over 50 new changes and features in iOS 14 beta 2. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to let me know down below and stay tuned for lots more coverage on iOS 14, iPadOS 14, watchOS 7, and macOS Big Sur. Special thanks to Mac Stadium for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Remember, you can get 50% off the first six months of a Mac mini subscription with code WWDC2020. Head over to macstadium.com slash 9to5Mac for the details. Oh, almost forgot. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.